Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. This problem right here has been rightfully stolen from Christopher from Facebook. Hey, good morning. Admin from Mathematic and Mathematic Memes. He posted this right here while back on implying we can discuss mathematics. Also, hello, my boys. You're a great community. I love you guys. Implying is so cool. You should subscribe to this community on Facebook. And well, we are going to solve this neat little limit today using three different approaches and we are going to start off really sl strong, not slow, we are going to start off really, really strong using <laughs> the small angle approximate. Can you hear this? I can already hear the pure mathematician scream in agony. <sighs> Prepare for a fight. <clears throat> Der <lacht> Apple. We have won, I guess. We have won. Oh, my heart is racing so much. <lacht> Fighting against thin air is really exhausting. <lacht> Papa Flamby's got that calendar. Oh, I, 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 Take me by my word, it's, it's really not an easy feat. There wasn't even meant as a joke, so you see, when x approaches k, we are going to end up with a really small value of the sign. So why not just approximate it using small angles? So um, I'm going to refer to this limit right here at the moment as just capital L. It makes things easier to write out. So we have L of s times y. Also, s times y are just some arbitrary constants. And then we have x squared times well k minus x. The argument itself is here. And what do we have down here in the denominator? Well, dividing by, we can factor out this k actually to k times k minus x. And well, small angle approximation does want this. So this is going to cancel out. And well, now we can safely approach k as the limit on x right here. So we have s times y k squared over k with the k cancelling out in the end. So we end up with the limit being just s times y times k. Now for the second method. <laughs> so the next way is going to make use of Papa L'Hopital. It, it does make sense actually. Everything's going to cancel out really nicely in the end. Although we have kind of a circular argument when using L'Hopital on sine, because when you differentiate sine using L'Hopital just results in a circular argument. But we don't care about that. We are going to take the, well, the derivative of sine for t granted right here. So why not? Take the limit L of, well, ddx of the uh, numerator. So s and y are just constant. So we have x squared sine k times x, uh, k minus x. And also we are going to take the derivative of the numerator, k squared minus k times x. Well, the numerator is quite easy to evaluate. It's going to be negative k down here. So this is the limit of something over negative k. Up here, s and y are just constants, bring them to the outside, and now we have to use the, well, product rule in this case. We have to do so because we have x right here and x right here as a factor. So let's start off slowly with the first one, 2 times x times the sine of k minus x. And then we are going to keep our x squared, so positive x squared, and we are going to differentiate this right here, resulting in the cosine of k times x k minus x, y, k times x, I, I really don't know. And also, what we have, well, we have to use the Chen Lu right here. Inner derivative is negative 1, so times negative 1. Okay, what are we going to end up with right now? Well, at the moment, we have this stuff right here, but now it's quite easy to take the limit because we can expand the limit on both parts right here. So let's try this out. So we have the limit of s times y and then 2 times x sine k minus x over negative k. We can do this, so that's quite good. So now if we let the limit approach k, well, then this is just k right here and we have the sine of 0 in the end. Can k minus k is the sine of 0, so this is just 0. So this limit is going to vanish in the end. Okay, but we have the other limit, so positive. Okay, what do we have? We have um, s times y and we have x squared, we have this negative sign right here, 
cosine k minus x over negative k. Negative and negative 1 is going to cancel out. This is going to result in the cosine of 0, which is just 1. So we have s times y times k squared in the limit over k, which is just s times y times k, what we have gathered before using the small angle approximation. And now for the last method, which I find to be the most interesting one. So we have seen before that if we factor out the k down here, we are going to end up with a factor of k minus x. Let's do this real quick. Factoring out this k, we have k minus x down here. And it does make sense to shift the limit a bit using a little substitution, you could say, that we have a new variable approaching some kind of limit being x minus k, let's call it t for example. So let t be equal to k minus x. What is going to happen to our x up here? Well, we can just solve for x with x being k minus t. Okay, this does work out. And what else do we have? Well, we have to change the limit. <laughs> Namely, we, we have to do so. So what happens? to t right here when x approaches k, well, t is going to zero in the limit. What do we have? We have a limit as t approaches zero. I hope you can see where this came from, just plugging this into the substitution. So we have s times y, and what do we have? We have now k minus t squared times the sine of t, namely, over k times t. No need to change the k right here, it's just a constant at the moment because it's not x. Our x originally only approaches k. Okay, what can we do? We can basically expand this right here using the binomial theorem. And what I would like to do, I would like to bring this factor of s times y completely to the outside. It's just a constant. Also this k, for example. No, we, we are going to leave it in there. Let's do it that way. And this limit, I'm going to refer to it as l once again. And when we expand this out, we can also expand everything out in the end. So this is the limit at first of where we have k squared minus 2 times t times k plus t squared sine of t over k times t. I hope you can see where this came from. And now we can break those limits apart under the condition that those limits exist. We're going to try it out and here they, they are going to exist in the end. That's the same as saying we have s times y times, okay, now we have the limit of, well, k squared times sine of t over k times t. That's the first one. Negative, we can bring this negative to the outside, limit of 2 times t times k sine of t over k times t. You can already see that a lot of stuff's going to cancel out. Positive limit of, well, we have t squared sine, uh, sine of t over k times t. And this is already really good closing the brackets off. So, what is going to happen to this limit? Well, when t approaches zero, this tk and this tk is going to cancel out. So we have two times sine of t, sine of zero is zero. So this overall is going to be zero. What do we have here? Well, t is going to cancel out down here. So we have t times sine of t, respectively. Approaching zero is just going to be zero in the limit. And we end up with this right here. So now we have just s times y times the limit as t approaches 0 of k squared sine of t over k times t. And you see one of the k's is going to cancel out right here. And we can bring this k to the outside. Why not do this? So we have sig times the limit of sine of t over t. And I'm not going to derive this, just use the Taylor series, but this limit right here is well known. As t approaches 0, this is going to go to 1 in the limit. I am, I can derive it. It's really quite easy in many different ways, but we are going to take it for granted. And well, our limit at the moment and the message of the day, since those are just real numbers, is that we have as the limit keys. And I would like you guys to game end yourself. <laughs> no, no, please don't game end yourself. I really love you guys. I hope you did enjoy this little limit problem. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. Support the channel in many different ways. You know how to support the channel. And well, up until the next video, have a um, box full of chalk day. See ya.
Ursprünglich. Aber 